Greetings AP Chemistry students. Today we're going to continue in Unit 4 and we're going to talk about titration. And a titration is when you react a solution whose concentration you know with another solution to perform a reaction so that you can find the molarity of the other solution. So if you have two solutions and you know the concentration of one and you don't know the concentration of the other, that's when you would use a titration. Now there are some terms that are useful to know. The titrant is the substance that is in the burette that you're adding to the reaction. The analyte is the substance that is in the Erlenmeyer flask that you're adding the stuff from the burette into the flask. And the equivalence point is when the analyte has been totally consumed by the titrant. In other words, when you have reacted equal moles based on the stoichiometry of the reaction of the stuff in the burette with the stuff that's in the flask. In other words, you have brought the reaction to completion. And then there is this thing called the end point, which is an observable indication that you have reached the end point. And the goal when you're setting up a titration is that you come up with some sort of identifier that lets you know to stop adding the titrant when you have reached or come very close to reaching the equivalence point. And so a lot of times we add something called an indicator, which is a solution that changes color with pH if we're doing an acid-base titration, so that we know when we have reached the end point reach the equivalence point. So it will tell us the end point and hopefully it's really close to the equivalence point. When we get into our unit on acids and bases, we'll talk a bit more about how we would select appropriate indicators for reactions. There are other types of reactions where as the reaction is taking place, things are changing color. Uh, you'll get to see one of those uh, in one of the labs we're doing, uh, either this week or next week, depending on your cohort. So this kind of uh, shows you a little diagram here where you have a burette, which has this little valve on the bottom of it called the stopcock that you open and close to allow the liquid to flow through the tip of the burette and into your Erlenmeyer flask. The analyte goes in the flask. The titrant goes in the burette. You would also add, if you're using an indicator, you would also add the indicator into the Erlenmeyer flask as well. So this is kind of the setup for it. Now, just to show you how the calculations work. So when you have reached the end point, if you're doing a reaction where the moles of acid and the moles of base are equivalent on a mole ratio. So for instance, in a demonstration you're about to see, I'm going to take HCl plus sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to make water plus sodium chloride. They react on a one-to-one -one ratio. So when the moles of HCl equal the moles of sodium hydroxide, the reaction is complete. Now since we're working with solutions, we know that molarity equals moles over liters. So if you solve for this, moles equal molarity times liters. And since moles of one substance equal moles of the other, then essentially we can revise this to get a very useful equation that looks very much like the dilution equation. Now, I must caution you that this equation only works for a one to one ratio, All right? If it's not a one to one ratio, then you're gonna have to calculate moles of one thing, then do the stoichiometry to do the conversion and calculate moles of the other. And you'll see an example of that in a lab that you'll be doing. However, for the demonstration you're about to see, this is the equation that you can use to solve this. So 
What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you a demonstration of a titration. You're going to need to pay careful attention and record some information as you're watching. And then I want you to determine the molarity that I ask for. And then you're going to enter that into a Google form uh, as an assignment. So that being said, I hope you all have a great day. All right, for today's experiment, I'm going to explain how to do what's called a titration. And in order to, the purpose of this experiment is I've got this hydrochloric acid and I don't know what the molarity of this acid is. So I'm going to try to figure that out using this 0 0.050 molarity sodium hydroxide solution. So I'm going to react a known volume of sodium hydroxide, whose molarity I know, with a volume of hydrochloric acid, whose molarity I don't know. And in order to do that, I need to keep careful track of the volumes that I use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is using this Erlenmeyer flask, I'm going to transfer exactly 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid into the flask. And I'm gonna use this device called a pipette, which it's a, it looks like a straw with a tip on the end, and it's got this little line right here. And when you fill the liquid up to the line, that is exactly 10 milliliters. I've got this thing called a pipette bulb, which I'll squeeze to initiate it. And then I'll put the pipette into the solution, and then I push the up arrow, which will draw the hydrochloric acid up into the pipette until I reach the line. And then I'll go over to the Erlenmeyer flask and press the down arrow on the pipette, which will dispense the hydrochloric acid into the flask. And a very small amount of acid may remain in the pipette and that's perfectly fine. It's calibrated for that to happen. So I've got the hydrochloric acid in here. Then the next step is I'm gonna use this device called a burette, which looks like this. It's got several different parts to it. You've got this long part is called the column, and it's numbered from 50 down here at the bottom all the way up to zero milliliters up here at the top. And so when you fill this burette up, it keeps track of the volume that you use. It also has this little valve assembly, which is called a stopcock. It is a Teflon coated plug that has a little hole in it. And when the handle is in line with the column and the tip, then the liquid can flow through. And when you turn it perpendicular like that, the liquid stops flowing. And then this part down here is called the tip. And to use this properly, you put the burette in what's called a burette clamp, which will hold it in place. And then I'm gonna use a burette funnel to fill the burette up with the stopcock closed. And I'm gonna pour it slowly so that I don't overfill this. And then before I can actually use the burette, I've filled it a little bit past the line, but there's no liquid down in the tip. So I need to open the stopcock, let some liquid flow through. to get the air out of the tip and also to get the burette centered exactly at zero. And let me help you see that. The burette is right on the zero mark. So now I'm going to use the burette to add the base to the acid. And when they react, we're going to make water and sodium chloride. That's going to be the products of this reaction. But in order to know when the reaction is complete, I need something called an indicator. For that, I'm gonna use this stuff called phenolphthalein, which 
in an acidic or neutral solution is clear or colorless, and when the solution turns basic, it turns a pink color. And so it'll let us know when we've added just the right amount of sodium hydroxide. Now to use this burette, I'm going to hold the flask with my right hand and swirl while I add the base, I'm manipulate the stopcock with my left hand. Whichever hand you're right with is typically the one you're gonna to want to use for the swirling action. You can start to see a little bit of a pink color that's staying around. So I'll slow things down a little bit until the pink becomes more persistent. And there we have a very faint pink color that we're looking for. Maybe a little difficult to see. But the faint pink, well, it's kind of faded. Let me add another drop. Let's see if we can get it to stay. It needs to stay pink for at least 10 seconds. There we go. That is the faint pink color that we're looking for. And so now we come over to the burette and we read it. And it looks like this burette is sitting right at 30.1, roughly milliliters right there. So now we have enough information that we can calculate the molarity of the acid.